Presents Jewels from the Holy Quran, a series of lectures by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mink. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creator of entire creation wa usalli wa usallim ala ashrafil khalqi ajma'in nabiyyina wa habibina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in complete blessings and salutations be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and forgive us on this auspicious night Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the purpose of his creation of mankind and jinkind in Surah Al-Dhariyat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a very, very important announcement. وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created mankind and jinn kind so that they may render worship to me, so that they may worship me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I don't want any sustenance from them. I want nothing material from them, nor do I want them to feed me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna Allah huwa al-razzaq dhul quwwati al-mateen. Allah is the one who will sustain everyone. He is the provider. He is the most powerful. He is the strongest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that He has created us solely that we may worship Him. Now, does this mean that we must stand in 24 hour salah? Or does it mean we must fast on a daily basis? No. What it means is our whole life must be in accordance with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know that if you sleep with the correct reasons or for the correct reasons, it becomes an act of worship. If you eat with the correct intention, it becomes an act of worship. If you walk with the right intentions to the correct places, it becomes an act of worship. So every single item we may engage in physically or what we may eat, whatever it is, we can convert it into an act of worship if we have coupled it with the correct intention and we are doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not outside the framework of the sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is quite simple to understand that our whole life must be in accordance with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make that easy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in Surah Al-Dhariyat, a very, very powerful verse. Then in Surah Al-Tur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jahannam very vividly. And he describes Jannah also in great detail. And then he makes mention of the accusations that were leveled against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They called him a poet. They called him a fortune teller. They called him a liar. They called him one who is seeking lots of wealth. They said this man maybe is interested in attracting the most beautiful of our women. Maybe he wants the power and he wants to be our leader and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives good news to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very very clear to everyone that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam solely came to us with a message and he will continue reminding فَذَكِّرْ فَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِكَاهِنٍ وَلَا مَجْنُونَ Continue reminding O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because by the grace and virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, neither are you a fortune teller, nor are you mentally disturbed as they are saying he is a madman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can listen to that which is good when it comes to us and we can obey it because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may he not harden our hearts. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah Al-Najm, the next surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a qasam by the star that is falling or vanishing. Allah takes an oath by the star that is vanishing or falling down. Now one might ask, are we allowed to take a qasam with anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We say, wallahi, when we want to take a qasam, we say, I swear by Allah. Can I say I swear by something besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answer is no. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done that in the Quran. In order to show us the greatness of some other creatures of his, when it comes to comparing those creatures with man. And to show us that he is the sole creator and no one besides him can create anything near that. So Allah takes a qasam by night. And by daybreak, wa duha, wa shams, wa layl, and so on. All these are qasams and oaths which are taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not allowed to take the same oath, but the, only the Creator is allowed to do that. If I want to take an oath, I need to take it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of His names or His qualities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the acceptance to be honest even if we don't take a qasam. Some people, even if they take 10 qasams, they still lie. And some people are known for their tongues that this person does not need to swear an oath. The minute they have told you something, it means it is the truth. They don't lie. May Allah make us truthful as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he only uttered the truth. Even without the qasam, he only uttered the truth. He does not utter anything that is incorrect, anything that is wrong, anything from his own whims and fancies, because absolutely everything he has uttered is directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the power of revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow his path inshaAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who follow their whims and fancies, those who follow doubt. Do you know that nowadays when the papers carry stories, it is very easy for them to just allege that this person committed that crime. And they say there, it is alleged that such and such a person did this and that. Even if that person wants to take them to court for defamation, he or she cannot do that. Why? Because they will say, well, we didn't say you did it. We just said it is alleged that you did it. So they hide behind the word alleged. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Allah says, those are doubts. And statements of that nature are unacceptable because they do not change the truth in any way. <laughs> Regarding the kuffar who were following their whims and fancies and what they were taught in the past and they were worshipping their idols and so on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are following their doubts. <laughs> And definitely the doubts do not benefit when it comes to the truth in any way. Doubts don't change the truth in any way. That is the message we must know. So we must not fall prey to that which is doubtful. When there is yaqeen and when there is solid knowledge, it cannot be changed by that which is known as shak or that which is doubtful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can believe the truth and stick by it. And may he not make us from those who fall prey to stories which are rumors and stories which are false. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us at all times. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again speaks of one of the other signs given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Qamar, the surah which is named after the moon. Allah commences saying, Allahu Akbar. Miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, the hour, the final hour is very, very near. And the moon has been split into two pieces. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked for a sign, he showed them many signs. They said, no, we want a sign that we want. Not a sign that you are bringing to us. Split the moon. Let's see. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just pointed at it with his index finger. And it split in two pieces. Allah makes mention of it here. Definitely the moon also split. Allahu Akbar. They still didn't believe the sign. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are some people, and this is the message tonight. 
Some people, no matter what is brought to them, even if the angels had to come and stand in front of them and say, we are angels of Allah, please believe in the message. They will still say, no ways, we are not interested. Bring something bigger than you. Allah says, Do, are they waiting for Allah to come and address them? Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why Allah says, Whenever they see one of these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn away and they say, that man is a magician. It is just an illusion of the eye. Allahu Akbar. That crack is still supposed to be there on the moon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. It had split and it was caused to come back by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can listen to his signs in the Quran and who can accept and turn. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the day of resurrection. Listen to the description. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws our attention to locusts. And he says, خُشَّعًا أَبْصَارُهُمْ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ كَأَنَّهُمْ جَرَادٌ مُنْتَشِرٌ their eyesights will be humbled. They will be coming out of their graves like locusts walking out of their holes. Imagine when we look at locusts coming out in the rainy season, coming out of their little holes, one after the other, they do not stop, do they? Allahu Akbar. And in no time we see the whole place covered with all locusts. Allah describes our resurrection in the same way. Imagine, today we are sitting in this masjid, mashallah, we are plenty in number. If all the Muslims of Cape Town had to gather, it would take us a long time to bring them together and even a longer time to disperse thereafter. And if we were to gather the Muslims of South Africa, the Muslims of Southern Africa, the Muslims of the globe right now, it would require a large space. Just imagine when we go to Makkah for Umrah or for Hajj, how many millions of people we see definitely looks like locusts. But those are not all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about the non-Muslims? What about those who have died in the past? The billions and trillions of people who have been buried in the soil of this earth. What about when they are all resurrected? Imagine, Allahu Akbar, only Allah knows the exact number. But Allah says, I will resurrect all of them. And that is why he says that one day of Qiyamah will be as long as 50,000 years from amongst the years that we count. Yet it will just be one day, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will serve justice completely just in one day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us stand up for justice at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that. And in this Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, the same surah, Allah has made mention a beautiful verse. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِن مُدَّكِرِ this verse has two meanings. The first is, we have made this Quran very easy to memorize. Is there anyone from amongst you who are going to attempt to memorize the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. I am sure all of us have memorized at least Surah Al-Fatiha. We've said it in the past. And at least the other short surahs, let us be determined to memorize a line a day, a verse a day, a small surah a week. A surah in the year, so at least we will be moving and heading somewhere, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have made the Quran simple to memorize. It is impossible to recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that they can be recited. It is impossible to recite any other book in the same way. Impossible. Word for word, full stop, exclamation mark, the apostrophes and so on. Absolutely everything and so many people on the globe have memorized this Quran. It is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second translation of the same verse. Allah says, We have made this Quran easy to understand. Is there anyone from amongst you who is going to take heed and to understand the lessons and to change their lives? Allahu Akbar. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ we have made the Quran easy to learn, to understand. Is there anyone from amongst you who is going to understand and take heed? Allahu Akbar. This month of Ramadan is passing. And it is passing very fast. We have now drawn close to the last few days of this month. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might not allow us to see the last day of Ramadan. He might take us away. And this is why one of the most powerful verses that we read tonight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hadid addresses myself and yourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Is it not the time when the hearts of the believers are going to soften? Has the time not arrived for the hearts of the believers to soften towards the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in this Quran? Has that time not come for me to change, to come closer to Allah? Has the time not come for you to change, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have heard the verses of the Quran. We have read the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have had on a daily basis explanations of verses of the Quran telling us, turn, turn, this reminder after that. Allah showed us how he destroyed the previous nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the examples of Ad and Thamud, the people of Salih, the people of Lut, the people of Shu'ayb, the people of all the other messengers, Fir'aun and so on, Qarun, Haman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us those examples of how he has destroyed people. When are we going to change? What are we waiting for? This is the question Allah is asking us. Am I waiting for my health to disappear? When I become old, then I might turn. What if I don't see that old age? If I have wealth, am I waiting for that wealth to go away before I turn to Allah? Ya Allah, someone usurped my wealth. Now help me. This is why the hadith says, Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha'i ya'arifka fi shidda. We've mentioned this hadith in the past. Get close to Allah at times of ease and at times of difficulty. You will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very close to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become close to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking this question. And it is not coincidentally in the last parts of the Quran because now we've read the whole Quran. We are close to the end and Allah is saying, come on, is your heart not softening? Aren't you going to make that pledge and promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya Allah, I have this bad way, that bad quality. I am not reading my salah. I'm not doing this, not dressing properly. Ya Allah, I promise you that today is the day I am turning. From this day on, my five salah is in place. I'm going to dress appropriately and I'm going to cut everything that is haram in my life. Ya Allah, I have learned the lesson. We will see the doors of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening for us. Or do we want to be like those similar to Fir'aun when Fir'aun, after he saw the angel of death and then he said, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him when he saw the angel of death and he became a believer at that time, Allah says, no, it's too late. Now it is too late. You've already seen the angel. Are we waiting for the angel to come to us and tell us, you know what? You're going in 10 minutes time. Start engaging in tawbah. That won't happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So this is the message tonight. The question I need to ask myself tonight, and this is a very auspicious night. And the question you need to ask yourselves tonight, as I've said, very auspicious night. When am I going to turn? What do I need? What other signs do I want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What am I waiting for? As it is, he's given me this and that. Am I waiting for it to go away one by one? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can take heed. So this verse has repeated itself a few times. In different wordings, as we've said, the one says, we have made this Quran easy to understand. Anyone from amongst you is ready to understand it and take heed. That's the one verse. The other verse, has the time not come? Has the time not come for the hearts of the true believers to soften up towards the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens a very, very beautiful surah wherein the verses rhyme and i'm sure a lot of us heard it and enjoyed it surah al-rahman the question there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us again i've given you so much i've given you everything you have do you still deny the favors of your lord which is it of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, O man and O jinn, do you deny? Is there anything you deny that this is not from Allah, this is from me? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us not from those who deny his gifts. But somehow, if we take a careful look in our lives, we can always improve because 
We have been taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that those who transgress, they are denying the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are denying the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be given. In fact, they are denying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them, the favors granted on them. Because imagine when someone does good to you and you disobey that person. Have you done any justice there? No. When people give us a car or a house or some money or a salary, we become faithful to them automatically. We won't say a word against them, even if they are wrong. Sometimes we become weak. We don't even want to say a word against them because we know where our bread is buttered. We know exactly where it's buttered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We should be from amongst those who realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first. Before everything else, it is Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. May He grant us the ability to turn to Him. Ironically, sometimes we tend to enjoy the recitation of Surah Al-Rahman, but we miss the whole message. The message is, are you denying the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Turn to Allah. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rahman? He says, the criminals shall be known by their signs on the day of Qiyamah and they will be driven to Jahannam. When you see prisoners, they are normally dressed in very distinct clothing so that they cannot escape in a rush. On the day of Qiyamah, there shall be criminals who will be very distinct. Everybody will know these people are for Jahannam. May Allah not do that to us. Allah speaks about that in Surah Al-Rahman. We don't want to be the criminals. And Allah speaks about His power. And the good news is more than anything else, Allah describes Jannah in Surah Al-Rahman. Every time the punishment is mentioned, Allah overtakes it with His mercy in every single way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the gifts that are prepared for the believers in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. A point of note, in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah says, Rabbul Mashriqayni wa Rabbul Maghribayn, Lord of the two Easts. And Lord of the two Wests. We may ask, where are the two Easts? And where are the two Wests? We only know of one, East and West. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that He knows His creatures better than us. In winter, the rising point of the sun is different to that of summer. And in, in summer, the setting of the sun is different to that of winter. Slight difference, we will notice it. In fact, not a slight difference, a huge difference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So he speaks of the two points of the rising of the sun and the two points of the setting of the sun. Allahu Akbar. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbul Mashriqayni wa Rabbul Maghribayn. Early winter and early summer, study the precise rising point of the sun and the setting of the sun. You will notice it is different from the early winter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to turn to him and may he accept our tawbah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the one who has feared the status of Allah. Didn't we speak moments ago of the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The one who is conscious of the status of his creator shall have two jannas, two gardens. Allahu Akbar. Have as many gardens as you want. Once we enter Jannah, There, whatever the soul desires, the soul shall have. Allahu Akbar. You can start drawing up your list from now. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all Jannah. The next surah Allah describes al waqiah the final hour, the last time, and the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al waqiah presents a solid message that on that day, man shall be divided into three groups. Allah speaks of Two categories of people who will enter Jannah and one category who will enter Jahannam. Didn't we say that the mercy of Allah overtakes his punishment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of Qiyamah, everyone will be given their books, their accounts. Everyone will be given their books. Those who will be given their books on their right hand, may Allah make us from amongst them. Those are known as Ashabul Yameen, the people who will be given their books on the right hand. Alhamdulillah. 
Then there are Ashabu Shimal, the people who will be given their books on the left hand. They must know automatically as they get their books on the left side, may Allah protect us all, they must know we have failed. May Allah save us. Then Allah describes a third category, those known as As-Sabiqoon, As-Sabiqoon, those who came first before everyone, they started all the goodness. When everything was young, they were the ones who took the leading role. The Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those we mentioned yesterday, those who took part in the battle of Badr, those who made hijrah first. And inshallah, it will apply to those who start the Islamic activity. Because when you start up something, it's very difficult. In those difficult times, the people who did it are not equal to those who come in later on when everything is flowing and they jump onto the roller coaster. They will also have a reward. But the ones who started it, the fathers of that goodness, those are known as as-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon. Those who started the goodness, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who initiate goodness every time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these three categories of people. Also, one of the categories, meaning the third category, as-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, it is said those who were young as Muslimin and they grew up in their youth, they did not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the very beginning, they were found in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them through the tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith where he says there will be seven types of people that Allah will shade on the day of Qiyamah. He will grant them the shade of his arsh on the day of Qiyamah. One of them is Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. That youngster who grew up in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youth and all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong. In the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions us, asking us, who has created you? The semen, the drop of semen thereafter being created into a perfect human being. Who did that? Did you do it or did we do it? Allahu Akbar, it's Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that he causes death. And still, people who die feel that no, they were the creators. Allahu Akbar. Yet they are dead. Fir'aun, what did he say? He told the people, Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am the highest Rabb that you have. Allahu Akbar. And he knew when his leg was paining, he knew my leg is sore. I can't do anything about the pain that I have in my knee. And still he is saying, I am the Rabb of the whole world. Allahu Akbar. Look at how man is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, take a look at the crop. Allah says, look at what you have sown. Look at the crops, the seeds that you have sown. When the crop comes up, is it you that causes it to come up or us? Allah is asking. Allah says, if we wanted, we could have destroyed it or we could have made it unedible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us about the rain. Do you see the water that you drink? Who brought it down? Did you bring it down or did we bring it down? If we wanted, Allah says, If we wanted, we could have made it undrinkable. You wouldn't be able to drink it. Take a look at some water. It has too much salt in it. People can't drink it. They need to use these desalination plants in order to purify the water before they can drink it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's a gift of Allah. Who made that water come down? Allah says, look at the fires that you kindle. Who causes that fire to burn? Is it you or us? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us the ability to comprehend his status and the fact that he is in absolute control. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after having spoken about these three categories of people that we mentioned, even at the end of the same surah, Allah makes mention of the three categories again. And he makes mention of what he's prepared for those three categories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from any one of the two that are going into Jannah inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about spending in his path in the next surah, Surah Al-Hadid. The surah named after steel, steel, the iron. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكلا وعد الله الحسنى Those who spent their wealth before the victory of Mecca when times were tough, they still spent their wealth and they fought in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not equivalent to those who spent later on when times were easy. Didn't we mention that moments ago? That when we initiate something, it's difficult sometimes. Those difficult stages, who were the founders at that time? Allah will reward them inshallah abundantly. Because they struggled and strived. Later on those who came in, they will also have a reward. Allah says, both groups we have inshallah we have kept in store for them goodness and we give them glad tidings we promise them goodness both groups but the group that started is far more virtuous than those who came later here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the virtue of those who made hijrah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who accepted Islam before the victory of Makkah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a comparison of this dunya. And I will end with this comparison, but it is a very beautiful comparison. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I would like you to know. Allah says, I'lamu, you should know. What should you know? لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد. We want you to know the similitude of this dunya. What is it? It is play and amusement. The dunya. Allah is describing it. Listen very carefully. It is play and amusement. لعب وله. Then it is beauty. وزينة. وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ Then it is competition between you. In what? In wealth and in children. The example sounds quite similar. Let's go slightly deeper into it. When a child is born, what happens? Do they start with the toys that are more complicated or simple toys? They start with something simple, a rattle that makes a little noise. لَعِبٌ It's known as لَعِب to play. لَهُ is more complicated play. As you grow older, you're no more interested in a rattle. Child grows to seven years, they want a remote control car. Allah speaks of la'ib first. Then he says, then you get to lahu. This is the example of the dunya. You get to lahu, that is now the computer games and so on and other amusements and so on. Then what happens? You get to teenage. When you get to teenage, what are you interested in? Zinatun, beautification. You become conscious of yourself, male and female. You know how you look and you know what you wear and you want to impress everybody else may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand so Allah gives that as the third step Wazinatun. then now you have everything now you started working what do you do tafakhur tafakhur means you start now boasting one another oh I've got more than him more than him in what wa tafakhurun fil amwali in wealth oh I got a lot my father's given me so much and I got so much you know now I've earned then what happens you earn you start boasting and bragging what type of cars you drive and what type of this you have and that you have and after a while you get married when you get married what happens now you become old when you start becoming old and you start wiltering and withering Allah says now you still boast and brag about what awladi about your children I've got 10 children they're all doctors they're all plumbers do you know every time we speak about doctors and plumbers there is no virtue of a doctor above a plumber remember that and there is no virtue of a plumber above a doctor no one must feel that no you know what we are being spoken every day and it seems like virtue is being given to the doctors over the plumbers no that example has appeared three or four times in these sessions but wallahi inna akramakum indallahi atqakum wallahi the most Honored from amongst you are those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it happens to be a bin man who collects the rubbish from our house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here makes mention of this dunya and how then people become boastful about their children. Why their children? Because now you can't boast about wealth. When you die, your children will take it over anyway. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that beautiful example in Surah Al Hadid, as we said in the past. When an example is given in the Quran, it fits 100%. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and He gives the similitude later on after that, and He says, 
كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما الله says similar to that rainfall which makes the farmers happy the word kuffar is used here to refer to the farmers that rainfall which makes the farmers happy then you find the seeds grow and mashallah you find the green crop it is strong and you find it swaying and it is literally dancing in the wind then it comes up exact example of the human being and if it comes up and you don't harvest it at the right time what happens it then grows old it starts bending and it actually becomes yellow and it starts withering and then it is useless Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding everyone has to grow old don't be frightened of old age ask yourselves have I prepared for meeting my Rabb? Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdihi. Ganashari wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfirullah.